Welcome to Lizard People. This is a show where we talk all about conspiracy theories, crazy people, and kooky ideas about what's going on behind the scenes. I'm your host, Caitlin Hempstead. Let's get to the show. Yes, please. Okay, great. <laughs> um, Lindsay Stidham is our guest. She's a <laughs> spooky, talented writer. She's written a couple of feature films. Uh, you should check out her film, Super Slut. Uh, yeah, superslutthemovie.com in case anybody has money to get. <laughs> If you want to produce it, you want to. They've got a first in credit. already. <laughs> um, don't worry, there's already someone in. You're not. It's not yeah. all on you. Um. Oh, you're so fun to hang out with, and I'm excited <laughs> to spend this hour with you talking about one of my heroes. Yeah, is Andy Kaufman. Andy K. I love, I love him yeah. as well. How did you for do you have like a memory of first seeing Andy Kaufman? Oh my gosh. I wanna say uh, because I'm still I'm still kind of young, you guys. Um, <laughs> Jim Carrey, I think, is the one that made me become obsessed with him with a man in the moon. Yeah, as with is, a lot of people, yeah, I think. Yeah. It's one of my favorite films. And I was always a huge Jim Carrey fan and um, Um, Less familiar with Andy Kaufman, although definitely familiar with uh, old school SNL. So I think I like was vaguely familiar with him and then saw that film and became mildly obsessed with him for a period of time. Solid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you like you have to do. I don't yeah. think he gets nearly enough credit for like making so many other weird careers possible. Yeah. Like there would be no who's that stand up who does the like the koalas are uh, koalas jokes. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> the one who's like cutest <laughs> infestation ever and the one who would st- the one who died <laughs> oh. this is driving me crazy um i don't know i don't know but i f- to be honest i feel like there would be like no ucb there would be like totally. no weirdos uh doing character work slash like absurdist yeah people doing super absurd things like charlene Yee, who at one yes. point won the andy kaufman award i feel like he is definitely an inspiration for people like that who do yeah. weird character work and push boundaries of being on stage so totally everyone yeah. who doesn't just go up and do straight and at some i read some interview where he was like i am not a comedian and i prefer not to be called a comedian no he likes to be called a song and dance man <laughs> Which I love because I yes. don't know that he necessarily sang and danced that much. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. that one character. <laughs> well, Solid. he was Elvis, so, you know. <laughs> right. Dead on Elvis. Spooky Foreign man's Elvis. Elvis yeah. Was, what did he call uh, him? Clint something? Clifton. Clifton. Thank yeah, you. the stand-up character. Yes. Tony Clifton. Tony Clifton. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> what yeah. made you want to do this theory? Um, I think because I like believing in heroes being alive Mm -hmm. and I wanted to examine it more because um, even his brother says he's still alive. Oh, so (laughs) well, that's complicated. Yeah. His brother said he got a letter from him like as recent as 1999, which is not that recent anymore. But um, also Andy said that he was going to be dead for 30 years. Yeah. And now it's been uh, 32. Yeah, exactly. Like 32 ish years. So and he was rumored to show up at the SNL reunion i heard everyone was like waiting with bated breath yeah yeah yeah. so why don't you lay out sort of like the facts of andy kaufman's life that everyone agrees upon and then we'll get into what the theory is (laughs) sure yeah there are some conspiracy theories that i learned today that i didn't even uh, know about but the facts about his life is he was born january 17th that's one day after my birthday your girl got maybe dates <laughs> all right maybe that's why i like him so much so he was a capricorn oh, so <laughs> what, are, what are capricorn things um we are stubborn leaders that mm. want things our own way mm. <laughs> um but we're also fiercely loyal people yes 
So I do think those things are true about Andy Kaufman. I think you're that stubborn. Oh, you, you don't even know. <laughs> then you really control yourself when we film stuff because you were being very generous. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good. I'm glad I got it under control on the outside. <laughs> I think you can control it enough to be a good director. <laughs> that's good. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So January 17th, 1949 was his birthday. And then he died, made, rumored death. <laughs> Possible fake death. Alleged death. Alleged death, May mm-hmm. 16th, 1984, so 35 years young. So died super young if he died, which many people <laughs> believe he lives, um, me included. Uh, of lung cancer is the technical term. And then his L.A. County birth certificate said renal failure, which actually makes conspiracy theorists like go crazy and be like, that's not necessarily really? in conjunction with lung cancer. Oh, I did not see that. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So there is an LA County death certificate, though, that exists that like often circulates when people start to go really crazy about him coming back. And a couple years ago, there was a guy in Long Island who claimed to be Andy Kaufman, and he yes. started a blog about like what my life is like now. And his um, he was rumored to that he was going to take like a test and like provide DNA samples in his hair and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if that ever came to fruition. I think people are just like, we're going to let this like. A uh, possible hoax of this living man who may or may not be Andy Kaufman in like upstate Long Island. <laughs> We're just gonna let it exist. But interesting. Yeah. I heard that he was he kept demurring. I read a thing about how people kept being like, "Great, do the test now," and he kept being like, "I know, I can't." Yeah, anything. and he stopped writing blogs in two thousand and six, which was a bummer because his blogs were fairly entertaining. He's funny. Yeah, I wish he would be a funny man on his own. He could be a song and dance man. He could totally be a song and dance man. <laughs> <laughs> he could. Yeah. So those are um the technical facts of life and death uh but you're right he didn't consider himself a comedian his two most famous characters are probably latka who was initially just foreign man yeah uh, but was given a name to be on taxi uh which there are definitely varying rumors of like how difficult he was on taxi some people say he was incredibly difficult and he never wanted to do it and other people totally disagree and say that he was like a, a gem and wonderful to work with so very disparate like, um, opinions about yeah. what he was like to work with. Totally. Yeah. Like uh, the actor from... Uh, fuck, what is going on with my brain? <laughs> uh, who's that really great, uh, like classically trained actor who was in that movie where they go inside his brain? <laughs> Not John Lithgow. Keep <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> yeah, Kiefer Sutherland. The classically trained actor. Where like Dennis Quaid is like in a ship inside somebody's body. Oh, I might no. be getting my 80s no, movies no, no. confused. This is the one where they like go inside and they can control him and there's puppets. There's a lot of puppet metaphors. Oh, John Malkovich. John Malkovich. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. Oh, boy. I got a bad brain. Yeah, uh, yeah there's My other of... favorite Kaufman, Charlie Kaufman. Oh, Charlie Kaufman's yeah. a real national treasure. <laughs> you love, you love, love Jewish comedians. You love Jewish comedians. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I hear John Malkovich. There's alternating, like, apparently, like, some days he's incredibly cold, and some days he's, like, very lovely to work with and, like, generous and nice. Yeah. Malkovich? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. believe that. He seems like a crazy weirdo. Big time. Yeah. Let's um, drop names. So, so only the people who are on Taxi can truly say what he was like to work with them. But everybody who was on Taxi says pretty good things about him. But what about he, SNL? Did people like working with him? Yeah. Well, they, they pretty much just lifted his stand-up that he'd done for years. That's about all they did in SNL. But then he got that It's true. He was never really show. in sketches. Yeah. He got a show, his own show, though, which, was, which did oh. not go well and okay. did not last very long. And that's when he really started like playing with the audience and messing with the audience and um the great gatsby yeah he would read the great gatsby on end in live shows and uh he also would stop sketches in the middle of sketches and do weird stuff during that show so it didn't last very long got it yeah Yeah. Yeah. that's hard to translate to tv like a lot of great live comedy (laughs) yeah it does not necessarily translate into a minute long sketch and uh i think it's so fun to think about him being alive because i think that he dealt with a lot of life and death themes in his comedy. Yes. For sure. Like, he didn't want things to end. Like, in his uh, live show, he took everybody out for milk and cookies. Like, he didn't want endings. He's like, just how long can I push this and how long can I push the tolerance of the audience, like the reading mm-hmm. of The Great Gatsby, and again, did not give a crap if people up and left. Like, totally. And another debt we really owe to him is like a comedy of discomfort and like yes. how much of this can the audience take before it's not fun anymore? Totally. And then it becomes fun again. Totally. 
totally. And the, a much lesser known sketch he did was like with the Howdy Doody doll. And what? he would he would like talk to Howdy Doody um, that Howdy Doody had died. And he'd have Howdy Doody die in the sketch, but then he'd like have him be reborn as well. <laughs> so he definitely has like a theme of rebirth. And I think just even doing Elvis as well. Yes. Um, and Elvis said that Andy was his favorite impersonation. Really? Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. So definitely like a theme of of being afraid to die, I think, was very prevalent in his comedy. Yeah. Two talented men who did not actually die when they said that they died. Yeah. 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 And then the other thing that is very true that everybody says about him is that he got towards the end uh, end of his rumored life, if his death was happened when (laughs) we think when some people think it happened, he got very obsessed with talking to people about faking his own death. And he was very vocal about it. And he researched it a lot. And he interviewed interviewed other people who had faked his own death so most people at his funeral were convinced that it was a joke says so. bob zamuda yes yeah and i obviously bob zamuda is profiting off continuing this rumor but mm-hmm. additionally they were very close and they did pull incredible pranks together the tony clifton appearance on letterman was bob zamuda it was not andy yes that's a true fact yes so. i hear that and it was very weird yeah 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 and bob i'll try said, to add that to the website too yeah totally it's super weird um and bob said that you know they they talked they made a whole plan and they had agreed on the 30 years mm-hmm. and then it was quite a specific plan and that this is going to be the greatest prank of all time mm-hmm. and andy got really excited about it and was like i get to live a whole nother life and like yeah didn't he say so, yeah. uh, allegedly according to zamuda <laughs> said stuff about like i'm just gonna like have kids and just like be a random guy he said he was gonna be a children's uh clown yes. performer so that Zany he could just clown yeah exactly yeah. zany clowny so he could just walk around and make up and not be recognized yeah yeah so what's your version of what happened like what do you believe how do you believe he faked it yeah well they had According to Bob, who's a very entertaining writer, actually. Really <laughs> interesting character who I want to talk a lot about. He's a totally interesting character and a pretty good writer. And yeah. was Andy's writer for a long time. And apparently Andy offered him money before he was going to die. And he said, no, that would implicate me in your death. And people would more believe that you're really dying if you leave me any money. So don't mm-hmm. leave me any money. So he didn't take any of Andy's money when he allegedly died but says bob Zimmerda. yeah yeah but they had a, a body double and andy started to emulate the appearance of the man they were going to use as of the corpse that they were going to use in uh in his funeral so he was a this corpse they just found a corpse from the get-go I don't know if it's a corpse or a body double and that person was breathing because people are at the funeral say they would lean over the coffin and be like, Andy, knock it off. Like, Andy, if if you're joking, like, stop it. Like, people thought, like, people were still, like, thinking he was alive. That's macabre as hell. Yeah, it's really scary. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, yeah. So they, so he found somebody who looked like him. I don't know if he was dead or alive, but he started to emulate his appearance. Bob says he shaved his head and he lost a lot of weight. Um, The other, like, very new rumor conspiracy theory in Bob's, like, most recent book that his girlfriend, that Andy's girlfriend contributed to, Mm -hmm. was that Andy had AIDS, and he didn't die then, but he didn't want anybody to know that he was bisexual, Mm -hmm. and so uh, he faked that death, but the girlfriend believes he is dead now, but he did not die at that time. Now, the AIDS thing is really interesting to me, and I want to, like, sidebar to talk about it a little bit, because that part, I was like, this is maybe a little bit compelling. Cause there and are, maybe real, because he was um, a sex addict, for sure. Yes, He had like, right. sex with 42 women in like 24 hours yeah. at the Bunny Ranch. Yeah, that's an agreed, like, there, I, <laughs> I find that there's enough compelling evidence to be like, he was a sex maniac, yeah. and like, maybe very aggressively bisexual. Yeah, definitely. And and in the Castro, they say his ghost haunts the Castro in San Francisco. So. Really? Yeah. Did you go to the Castro when you were there? I was just there, and I didn't make it to the Castro this time. I, I would love to do a trip just to go to where Andy Kaufman hung out. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> just like walk walk his streets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there are a lot of firsthand reports of being like, oh, yeah, Andy Kaufman would be in here nightly picking up dudes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they, And that was the time when like AIDS was more in the gay community and like... Yeah, it will. It would have been the first wave. It would have been before they even called it. It would have been grid and before yeah. they even called AIDS and knew what it was. But and renal failure, yeah. I think, does right, and that tracks so seem more believable. Yeah, yeah, and it would make sense that he wouldn't want that to come out and yeah. um, maybe did not die at that time. But uh, 
The evidence for him being alive is that people keep uh, posting pictures of him in New Mexico. So, or somebody who <laughs> looks definitely like him and is of the right age, which would be 66 now, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so, there's this, these pictures of this guy who dresses really similarly to Andy, like always has a blazer and a scarf. Mm-hmm. And now he has white hair, looks vaguely like Elvis even. <laughs> And he's just like rolling around New Mexico and there's video of this guy out there as well. Um, So some say he's like a monk there and he's just chilling and hiding out that way. Um, So some think he's he's changed his appearance but now has like come back to what he did previously look like. So Kaufman heads really like to think that he's chilling in New Mexico. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a bad call if you are trying to get away from your former life to continue dressing exactly the same? Well, I think they think he took a break as a monk, and was and that's how he was able to hide out so long. Oh, that he's been in like some monastery for yeah. thirty years. Yeah, but now he's mm. resuming what he used to look like. Got it. Because it's time for him to come back. Because so it's, it's been thirty. Years. <laughs> so it's the thirty-year plan, but it's on a slow burn. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of doing a big comeback, he's just chilling, waiting for everyone to notice. Well, him. that's what he would always tell Bob about the joke. He's like, "It's not a good joke if I go away for five years." He's right. like, "I have to commit to this." What was the quote? It's like a, it's a little boy thing to go away for two yeah. years, and it's a man thing to do it for thirty. Yeah, that's, it takes balls. <laughs> <laughs> what a, but like, what a giant weird. cojones to disappear yeah. for thirty years and come back. Yeah, the yeah. gold tatas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's had a lot of time to work on new material. Yeah. Is the bottom line? <laughs> is that what it is? He just really <laughs> needed to get away, clear his head, do a writer's retreat. You had to be like, I'm not playing Laka anymore. Yeah, I now have fresh material. So is that why you think he did it in your in your version of the conspiracy theory? He I just... definitely think he reached a level of fame that I think was surprising even to himself. And hmm. I think comedians uh, with issues don't necessarily. Or any comedian or any human probably doesn't deal well with uh, the level of fame that he reached. Um, and he never wanted to be, he never wanted to do a television show initially. Um, really? Yeah, his manager convinced him to do Taxi and he didn't want to, but he did it, obviously. And that's what exploded his life. Hmm. Yeah. And also the other thing is, is his grandfather and why I think he always had issues with life and death and wanting no ending. Yes. His papu died when he was very young and his parents did not tell him they were just like he just went away to another country it's fine and so he totally lost it and like used to talk to walls as a child and lock himself in a room and um obviously had issues surrounding death for a very very long time Hmm. yeah 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 Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't know he didn't want to do taxi. There was a um, really interesting Dave Chappelle quote that I saw that Dave Chappelle was like, I'm going to like pull a Kaufman because this TV stuff is bullshit. Yeah. And they're like forcing me into a caricature of myself. Exactly. Yeah. He, he told Bob in 2005, I guess, at Aspen. Ironically, I was there volunteering. You were? I was there volunteering for the HBO Comedy Festival in Aspen Amazing. in 2005. Did not get to see Bob, but did see Dave do a set in a tent that I will never forget. What was it like? It was amazing. It was like, he was just telling stories. He was not doing jokes. He was just telling stories in a tent in Aspen. But I guess Bob Zamuna was there at some point, and he told Bob, uh, Andy's the reason I quit, which um, Bob was like, ugh. <laughs> 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 Don't want to be, don't want to be responsible for Dave Chappelle going into hiding. <laughs> but, going to Africa for a couple of years. Yeah. Wait, so was it a funny set? I'm it so, was I'm, just stories. I'm comedy nerding out. Yeah. He was just telling stories. He was not uh, doing a set. But I remember being incredibly entertained. Yeah. He, de- I, are we allowed to say a f word on this podcast? Girl, fuck he it up. Definitely said fuck a lot of times and seemed angry at that juncture in time, yeah. but also like happy to be there in a tent with. Because like, that would have been his peak anger. That would point, have been right? his peak point. I think he had just quit. I think it just happened. Yeah. 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 But he was having. That's kind of nice <laughs> to hear that he could still like have a good time doing comedy even then. Yeah. Or like doing whatever it performs. Storytelling. Yeah. It was his own his own moth in a tent. Yeah. <laughs> Pre moth. He's a genius. He's always ahead of the curve. Yeah, totally. Uh, He's like you bitches are gonna be telling stories in microphones <laughs> after this day. Anytime now. He knew podcasting was coming. Um 
So why would the LA coroner's office lie? Because there is a death certificate. There is a death certificate. Um, I mean, maybe he contacted them. I mean, he, he did have friends in high places. You think? Or maybe they just didn't do DNA tests on that body that they used that wasn't his body. So you think he so. just maybe, like, paid someone off or had a fan in the coroner's he office? Did, yeah, plenty of money. I mean, if he was making, like, a, a foolproof plan of doing this, then... Yeah. Yeah. I like cop corruption slash government corruption has a sordid history in Los Angeles. Lord knows. <laughs> it seems like not that hard to pay people off, even today. Yeah. I mean, I need to put some money away in the bank for when I have to pay people off. <laughs> Any day now. <laughs> Any day. It's coming. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was that whole sheriff scandal where they just swept that all under the rug. Or yeah. tried to. Yeah. Yeah. LAPD. Dirty town. Y'all need to work on your shit. Yeah, Chinatown, baby. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> it never goes away. Okay, so I struggle with the Bob Zamuda thing. Because right. Because so much that you said, you know, so much of this is from him. So much of it is from the book that he wrote with Margulis. Yeah. The, long, the girlfriend. Like, the partner slash girlfriend. Yeah. 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 And so he at one or two points has done interviews where he's been like this is a joke yes it's all a big joke and a hoax that i think is funny and that's why i'm doing it oh where he's admitted he thinks andy is dead at this point yes yeah he definitely wavers he's definitely an unreliable narrator for sure yeah um but he in the latest book he addressed andy directly and he laid out a plan for him to come back in the book Hmm. and and basically a letter directly to him um I think what's just so interesting is that, like, it's been 30 years and the interest in this has, like, not wavered, which well, is I fascinating. Well, I think it peaked after Man on the Moon, right? That's when people started to that talk was about pro- this. Yeah, again. that was probably the peak. But then again, SNL uh, reunion, which was just last year, again, it peaks and people are like, he's coming, he's coming. And uh, the brother, who uh, who knows if he's just in total, he asked, the brother Michael asked Andy at one juncture to stop telling him about things because he's like, I don't want to lie later on. Wait, like in Andy Kaufman's lifetime. And when Andy was around, Michael asked... (laughs) In one way or another. Yeah, Michael asked Andy to just stop telling him about plans plans to fake death or if he was ill or whatnot. And Michael's the one that keeps saying he hears from him um, as recently as 1999. So let's talk about Michael because I feel like he hates the Zamuda stuff. He keeps saying, like, this guy's a liar. Yeah, they don't... Well, they don't like this most recent book, particularly the the claim that he possibly was bisexual and also... (gasps) Oh. Um, yeah, Bob Zamuda and the girlfriend agreed not to come out with that until both parents were were dead. And so Andy's father died in 2013, and then lo and behold, the book comes out in 2014. This is just more <laughs> evidence for me that the bisexual thing is true. I, th- I mean, if his longtime girlfriend uh, saying that, it seems quite possible. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but she also has... A reason to benefit from sales of the book. Yeah. Well, here's my uh, unique experience that gets to come into this story. Ooh, so, yes, yes, yes. Um, I worked for an astrologer to the stars for about a year. God, I love this story. <laughs> I love this story so, so much. Here in Los Angeles, he's going to remain nameless, but he is um, an ancient Indian man who may or may not have psychic powers. <laughs> but much of famous Los Angeles believes that he does, or can at least tell by your birth chart events that may or may not happen to you. So um, True celebrities who are at the top of their game. True celebrities still see him who are at the top of the, their game. People who are deceased used to see them include Michael Jackson. Uh, so this was one of my glorious day jobs <laughs> in my glorious time in Los Angeles. <laughs> and uh, one day I found Andy's chart and I was like, holy shit, you Andy is alive. Andy's alive. And I got so excited and I, it was everything in my power not to make a copy of the chart. To this day, I regret that I didn't make a copy of the chart. So what's interesting about these charts is um, they should be able to tell you when somebody has passed. And I, I vaguely learned when I was like really in it, I was like trying to teach myself how to read charts because if you do enough research, you, you can learn. I mean, yeah, it's very anyone can be scientific. an astrologer. Yeah. <laughs> anyone can eventually be an astrologer to the stars. Uh, <laughs> Maybe that's how you're going to make all your money to fund your films. Yeah, my side business. Yeah. And who knows? Um, 
But I was like looking at the chart and in his time of being 35, there were not like catastrophic events supposed to be happening to him. Like you can even like, there's even like a sector where you can like look at your health. I did this with my own chart. I'm not going to have a good time in my 70s, you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, did your chart up to the point that you read it seem like pretty? It seems like, it seemed like uh, I might fall ill in like my mid to late 70s. So I got to live it up, which is like real scary when you like learn how to read your charts and like, oh, no. but also who knows? He's an astrologer to this dot. What if it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and you're going to live it up too hard in It your could 30s? be. You're right. It's like all this knowledge is very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Yeah. I respect Lieb for not wanting to see her chart because yeah. it's scary. Well, I, he offered to read my chart and I was like, no. Oh, you didn't? Oh, okay. No, this is me doing self-analysis, which I'm sure is completely, <laughs> completely accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, my self-analysis of Andy's chart is that nothing, like nothing catastrophic health-wise he was having a wonderful time at the time that he uh, was supposed to pass. Um, so wait, you saw it because he came to your guy. I saw it because for. the woman who uh, who co-wrote the book with Bob uh, is a client of this <gasps> astrologer. <sighs> So she had all these. She so her file contained Andy's. I feel like I'm gonna get sued right now. No, no. I'm also like, who's watching me? <laughs> if I'm you're so nervous, afraid. we can cut it out. We can cut I'm it so out. afraid. <laughs> like I'm gonna okay. be struck down just by like the stars now. No, but, you, hey, I'll, I'll I'll do it with you. Scientology's fake. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now we're both gonna get okay, cool. struck down. All right. <laughs> um. But anyway, she had a chart with many men, and I was always so curious if like these were all men she was involved with. Andy being one. One, or if it was men they were both involved with because oh. she she lives in like this is a woman who lived in San Francisco so it may or may not be the author of the book or one of his friends in San Francisco because she's alive and she still talks to uh, the astrologer wow. which is why I found the chart because he still has appointments with a good friend of Andy's who lives in San Francisco but, but I still was sure. just we're not quite sure exactly who she is I never actually talked to her but I did um, see all these charts but that day was like the freaking greatest day of my life and I was like it's all fake and he's coming back and <gasps> I need everything every, Andy's alive basically <sighs> there are all yeah. these little <laughs> fluttering scraps of paper in this store they're like oh this one oh that one yeah That's yeah so you know um, he he could be totally fine just chilling in New Mexico yeah or he could be we're, living with wearing AIDS a, which adorable blazers <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Oh, I want to see those pictures. Yeah, they're pretty I'll good. They're out. solid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's my personal, uh, like, I literally, like I, almost, like, I almost dropped it. It was like one of those just weird moments in life where you're just like, ah, it's yeah. just like... It was just a strange moment. Like I almost like got a tin, like like the hair on the back of my neck stood up. Like who? Yes. It was very weird. It was just very weird to be in the presence of this guy too, who has spoken to so many powerful people. What mar? What I find <laughs> so marvelous about this guy is his self confidence. That he's yes. like, yes, it doesn't matter if you're a former president or like a huge director like I will tell you what your life is like yeah yeah totally it's another version of therapy because he's also a good listener hmm. yeah <laughs> most of the psychic stuff I've done in my life has been just like another version of therapy definitely of people being like I'll read yeah. your cards here's a thing you kind of already knew about yourself and I'll be like oh now I have to confront that thing I knew about myself yeah yeah totally yeah love tarot uh if anybody wants to give me a free reading holler at your girl <laughs> This is one. just a podcast for Caitlin and I to say what we need. <laughs> Lindsay needs a producer. I need a really good psychic. <laughs> Hook it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have also a... Also a boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Boyfriends would be great. <laughs> please date us. Please, please. <laughs> Watch us both have boyfriends by the time this airs. Boom. That'd be tight. It's the secret. If you put it out into the universe, it'll come back to you. <laughs> Um, I have a question. Yeah. About the body double situation. Yeah. yeah. If there was a body double, shouldn't it be pretty easy to find out who it was? And why would they stay quiet? Yeah. I'm assuming Andy paid that person well. That person probably was like, sure, I'll take your money, Andy Kaufman. I mean, he made a lot of, he made a lot of money in a short amount of time, for sure. Yeah. That he uh, maybe didn't need all of it to go be a monk. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> but why wouldn't they come out since then? Yeah, may, I mean, maybe it was <laughs> maybe Bob and Andy got a corpse. They were crazy enough, I feel like, and committed enough to this plan. Yeah. Um, and Andy very obsessively uh, thought this out 
talking to many other people who fake their own deaths. Is that confirmed yeah. by other people that aren't Bob Zamuda? Yes. Okay. That he talked about faking his own his manager has uh, confirmed that his manager at the time that he oh, okay. Yeah, that he was like, wouldn't that be the best joke of all time, basically? Wouldn't that be the best gag? Yeah. I don't know if you'd say joke since he's not a comedian. <laughs> gag. <laughs> a bit. A good bit. Great bit. Yeah, so he was I mean, I don't I am definitely can't deny that he was obsessed with death. Yeah. And absolutely. his own death and beating death. Yeah. 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 Well, but as are so many of us. Agreed. I think that's why uh, those of us who sometimes perform comedy or try to make films or write anything is uh, we all have a bad death obsession and want to be remembered and it's, don't want to see an ending and want people to acknowledge us for our special talents and yeah, all of those things. Yeah, and to be remembered and have an Oscars tribute. Yeah, yeah, I think it comes from the exact same primal part of our brain that makes us want to have children of the like, Absolutely. just leave something lasting of yourself. Yeah. Don't yeah. just disappear. Yeah. Produce an amazing memory. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any, like, conspiracy theories we haven't hit on at the moment. Um, I would like to think that coffins floating around being a clown at your child's birthday. That's, like, one of my favorite. <laughs> that is pretty fun to think yeah. about. Yeah. Somewhere in the New Mexico area, families are just, like, bringing him into their home. Yeah. There's definitely a clown business that's thriving, but it's, like, one dude. Yeah. Who's really entertaining. <laughs> Can you imagine? That would change yeah. my childhood. Yeah, me too. One time my parents got a birthday clown for me and it went very, very badly. Not because oh he was creepy. He wasn't wearing, it was like a Bay Area clown. So he just showed up in like kind of a fun, whimsical outfit and was like, let's talk about our feelings, but let's <laughs> dance them. <laughs> I was not, I was not down. Clowns are so scary. Yeah. I think even when it's like this new wave of clowning, <laughs> which is like a big thing in LA right now, like clowning. Yeah. The physical um, comedy of clowning. Yes. Yeah. And even that I find a little bit unsettling. I agree. Here's my question. If he does come back, how well does the line, here I come to save the day, play? Do you go with that line or do you come up with something new <laughs> great quote well if he's had 30 years and to is write he gonna be dressed as mighty mouse and <laughs> be on the today show yeah here well they just the yeah will he just show up on conan with no explanation yeah. and be like our next guest is a very special <laughs> and who would he pick that's interesting you said Ooh. conan because there's so many options now it's true well he's definitely not gonna do fallon no fallon i don't think so why because Jimmy Fallon, while I He's got the biggest love audience. him, biggest he has audience. a huge audience, but I also think Jimmy Fallon is about comfort food comedy, yeah. like things that are like awesome and fun, but sort of like, mm, yummy, that was easy to digest. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, was someone doing a silly activity and now, <laughs> now I yeah. forgot about it already. Maybe pull Letterman out of retirement. Maybe. <laughs> You should do Samantha B. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea. She's all about discomfort. Yeah, yeah. Go with the woman, Andy. Oh, if you're listening, we're our vote is Samantha B. Please. And my vote is go with Mighty Mouse and here I come to save the day. I think so. That's my vote. I think that he knows what hits. Yeah. I think I think as much as he's like, oh, I want to push boundaries and like try weird things. I think he also was a person who knew. Yeah. I mean, he came from the world of stand up. That's all about refining and finding the things that work and throwing out the things that don't. True. So. True. He's going to play the hits. I guess. I think he'll play the hits. Yeah. And then I think he'll launch into, oh, you're making me want this to be true. <laughs> and I think he'll start launching into weird new ways of like digital media pushing people's boundaries. And Oh, yeah. There's so much room for him in the world now. He'd be real big on Snapchat. Oh, my God. He would <laughs> slaughter it on Snapchat. <laughs> do you think he'd be a grumpy old man about it and not want to do that kind of stuff? I was going to say he might need Periscope because no time limit. Yes. He would just be perpetually periscoping. I think that he would do <laughs> one straight year of snaps that were just him staring silently into the camera with no variation. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he'll just come back on, on new media, not traditional media. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Watch your snaps, people. Yeah. <laughs> Andy Coppin. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's overdue. It's overdue. Yeah. So why yeah. is he late? That's a good question. Um, I mean, maybe he decided he doesn't want to come back. Maybe he's like, how can I go back to this former life? He obviously has some kind of new life. My big question is, like, of all the sex he had, how could he be a monk? That's like... <laughs> 
Well, maybe he's a he's like an addict. Like you have to be all or nothing. All or nothing, maybe. Yeah. He's never gonna like be a monogamous dude. Yeah. Um, another interesting thing is that Zamuda, and I was wondering if he was doing this to uh, try to lure Andy back, mm-hmm. but he faked his own death at the Bunny Ranch. Wait, what? <laughs> he faked, like this is a, before the new book. Yeah. So like early 2000s at some point he went out to the bunny ranch and faked his own death how and so long for did like people believe it for they believed it for like 48 hours and then the what? bunny ranch like did not want that on their their they did not want people to think that you could like go bang up a bunch of hookers and die <laughs> <laughs> so they were like no he is alive and they tweeted about it so it was at the time of twitter what? so the bunny ranch was the first to like blow his cover but he was doing a faking his own death and i was like is he trying to top Andy? Is he trying to get him to come back? Or, like, show how he could have done it? Yeah, or... yeah. I think he's trying to get him to come back since Andy also enjoyed the bunny ranch. Yeah. <laughs> God, he is so obsessed with He is. Andy. I mean, how, what, how, what a way to live your life. What a stri- <laughs> I always wonder this about, like, people who are assistants for their whole life. Like, they're just an assistant to one celebrity their whole mm-hmm. life. And it's like, how do you sublimate your ego that much? Probably because I'm a comedian and a narcissist and it has to be about me yeah. but it's like such a weird concept to me to be able to do that with your life to make it about someone else it is and then Bob is so interesting because he was part of the act like they created Tony Clifton together yes yeah so it was like both of theirs was something they shared in for sure but yeah he definitely always was in somewhat in Andy's shadow or or not in his own view since he was helping create what Andy created. Do you think that's what it is in his mind? He's living it's his gotta own. It's got to be. He's got, I mean, it has to be that, I guess, for him to carry this obsessive compulsive torch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's very compulsive. Yeah. But again, with the, like, is this a, like, he's another person that I'm like, could he be joking? Like, could this yeah. be his personal bit with himself, Bob Zamuda's? Like, wouldn't it be funny if yeah. someone lived their whole life obsessed with Nanny Kaufman? All I gotta say, when Bob goes, when he kicks the bucket, I just... Also, Bob, if you're listening, I'm looking forward to what you do because you have huge shoes to fill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how are you gonna go out? Yeah. He's gonna have to shoot himself out of a cannon. He's gotta go to wall. space, is the bottom line. Great, great yeah. call. Yeah. Great call. Go to the moon, man. He'd end up there, man. And then you literally have the man, the moon, and you. No, fuck. Oh. <laughs> Inception. <laughs> Isn't the Bunny Ranch where Lamar Odom almost died? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might be asking the wrong friend. <laughs> I think so. Is he yeah, out of the so. hospital? Don't know. You okay. I don't know what the deal with that is. Olivia? Is he going to play basketball again? <laughs> that I would say probably not. I think he, he's recovering still. I don't know if it's in a hospital or at home. Hmm. I think, though, he's still like he's not himself yet. Interesting. What was it? Aneurysms? No clue. Okay. <laughs> okay. We don't there know what happened. A lot of drugs. Anyway, uh, <laughs> another uh, luminary light in the constellation of stars, <laughs> just like Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Hmm. I forgot he was a basketball guy. Lamar Odom? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, was, he was just in the Kardashian universe. <laughs> I think that's what happened in my brain. He just got subsumed. Um, <laughs> he just got swallowed by butts and hair. <laughs> butts and hair. Uh, okay. Okay. I don't know how this works, Kate. I think, no, 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 I'm (laughs) taking a moment of quiet reflection. I feel like before we end, I have no idea what time it is or how these things work. I have a couple more things to podcast. It is? Yeah. Oh, you seem like such a prime podcast guest. Thank you. (laughs) You're very self-confident. Yeah. Do you, do you have anything you want to say? I have a couple of things I want to bring up still. I just said before we, before we end, we, I think we just have to address Andy directly is all. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let me make a couple more points and then we'll reach out to our. Okay, great. Our patron saint of weird comedy. Yes. The Tony Clifton script for the movie is a thing that a lot of people point to as evidence. Yes. Yes. Um, Do you find that convincing? Well, first of all, I want to read the script. I haven't read that script. Yeah, me either. But basically, there's a point in it where Andy Kaufman, like, directly addresses the camera as his character. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Clifton, the yes. Elvis proxy, and says, at 45, I'm going to fake my death of lung cancer at Senior Sinai. Yeah, yeah. So he uh, had to do it sooner than he thought. But yeah, he Is that what you think? Have, that's the 35-45 problem? 
he yeah. just couldn't take it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's maybe he did get sick in a different way and was hiding a secret identity and felt like he couldn't hide that anymore and had to go live that life or what it was that caught up with him sooner than that. But it's definitely clear evidence that this is something he was totally obsessed with for sure. Yeah. And uh, makes us keep hope alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to talk about his weird alternative treatments that he did. Oh, I don't know that much about this. Tell me. Yeah, I this I think was from two different sources, but when he found out, he was very, very private about his diagnosis mm-hmm. and like didn't make any big public statements about it. Mm-hmm. But some of his friends have agreed that he decided he was going to treat it with fresh fruits and vegetables mm-hmm. in lieu of radiation. And then he did a round of radiation when that wasn't working. And then when the radiation, it was too late for the radiation and that wasn't working, is what his friends say. Um, Mm -hmm. He went to have psychic surgery in Bali. Well, then that proves he did know my astrologer friend. (laughs) (laughs) Because that's something that sounds like the astrologer would tell him to do. Really? Go have a shaman beam it out of your body. mm -hmm. Especially if it was like in that part of the world i feel like wait he legitimately tells people to not have conventional medical interventions he definitely is a strong believer in in what you eat like big time like what you put in your body is like what how your body is going to feel hmm. uh big time yeah <laughs> although he really loves indian food <laughs> well indian food's delicious yeah. um which also i know a place if you want to grab food after this all right i'm all starving right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Um, you don't have an opinion on that. Also, Bob Zamuda says that Margolis, the girlfriend, yeah. was not in on the plan. Yeah. Now Margolis says she was in on the plan. Yeah. How do you reconcile that? I think she probably was. I think she probably had to be. They were still pretty intertwined at that juncture. Um, then why would Zamuda... Was, oh, yeah. Yeah, especially if she was helping him conceal a hidden part of his life. I feel like she was probably in on it. Hmm. Um, well, Bob is definitely an attention whore, that's clear. I, I feel, I, I mean, maybe that's the reason why he said that at some point. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Or just trying to hold on to whatever story they created, which I would imagine, you know, the de- the faking the death plan probably was most intimately planned out with Bob, actually, since he w- they wrote together all the time. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're crafting the best story of Andy's life, so... Mm, the great <laughs> final joke. Yeah, the, the final chapter, as it were, or just the beginning of a new chapter. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> is there anything else you want to say before we turn our gaze to Andy? Um, I think I just, yeah, I think I just want to say it to Andy. I just want to say, like, I think what's just most beautiful about him uh, in general, is his desire never to have an ending. And I think that's why everybody's obsession remains. Mm-hmm. And, like, uh, he's my number one person. Like, everybody's like, who would you like to have, if you could have dinner with anybody? Like, there's all those silly questions that you ask somebody. He's, like, my number one, but it would be milk and cookies, obviously. <laughs> and he could read me the entire Great Gatsby, and I'd be totally fine with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he definitely comes from a time that's, like, not of the now, which I think is, like, another reason we, like, remain obsessed with him. Totally. Like, for sure. Like, it's a time where you, like, still put on a record in a simpler time where simpler things were entertaining. But we had, think, and we had longer attention spans, and we're into the idea of no endings, so. And I think he is this kind of spooky time traveler of comedy where he had some things that were very, like that, like you say, putting on an entire record. Yeah. And some things that were so, so far ahead of the curve. Yeah, absolutely. And what's amazing is that it holds up. Like, every time a new, a new young person discovers him and becomes obsessed with him, it's like all those jokes hold up. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, deep cavalcade of um, treasure trove of American pop culture i feel like that's yes. never like you know elvis and Marilyn and andy kaufman never go away mm-hmm. they'll always be alive mm-hmm. yeah they'll always be on dorm room posters <laughs> yeah forever and ever yeah 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 all right what do you want to say to andy <laughs> um andy you inspired me you're a comedy you're, you're comedy is something that I shared with my parents at a time before I felt like I could share my hopes in comedy because we both thought you were so funny and inspiring and it was one of the times that my parents brought comedy into my life that I really treasure and damn you really hold up I hope even if you don't 
um, openly come back as yourself, like you should be sending in jokes to other comic. Like don't yeah. don't. They need your help. <laughs> yeah, we need we need you. We really need you. Please keep creating. Also, just FYI, if you've been a monk, there's still plenty of ladies who have sex with you. So we're just saying, because you're probably come back. <laughs> not naming names. We do not have boyfriends. <laughs> Uh, okay. 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 You've laid it out very clearly. I feel like we shouldn't. Uh, do we not? How do we go out on this? Podcast? Oh, so uh, I need you <laughs> to keep people entertained. This is the part of the podcast where I need a moment of quiet reflection on what you've t- told me today and what we've talked about, okay. and then I am going to make a verdict on how convincing I find this. Oh, oh, god. Um, because I like cool. to have a little summary and tie it up in a bow. So what That's I really need cool. your help with is to kind of keep people entertained for a moment or two. You can tell. A story about your guru <laughs> friend <laughs> or you can sing a little song or oh my god do an andy kaufman bit <laughs> jesus i feel like so much pressure i know i like to put people on the spot and make them uncomfortable oh man <laughs> trying to think of a good story from my week she is kate <laughs> uh my car is dying i'm really sad about it this is like not interesting. This is just my like just LA be struggle. Be real. Just be so real. <laughs> I feel like I've been super real in this podcast. So we'll keep with that theme. Yeah. Yeah. My car that has been so good to me for like, gosh, I've driven that car for like eight years. It's like a 1998 Saturn with no air conditioning. I just found out. It doesn't have a name. I think I'm gonna name it Andy right now. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, poor Andy. Right before I know, it's like death. And we're talking about death. <laughs> so I just found out the entire engine needs to be replaced in my 1998 Saturn. And I just, it is making me so sad for this inanimate piece of machinery. It's making me so sad that I have to, that I'm going to have to say goodbye to it. The reality is like finally here that this thing had, that has safely carried me through LA. I totaled it. It survived. I was able to rebuild it from totaling it. Like I'm really sad for this car (laughs) and i don't know why why am i feeling all these emotions do you need me to say anything more it's like not an entertaining story that was great it was just it was just a real moment that you shared so i'm gonna have to say goodbye to andy my car which leaves an entrance for andy kaufman to come back you need another andy walking in the door yeah i get that Mm -hmm. okay let me (laughs) share with you my uh how much you have convinced me. So uh, the way I do it is I split it into two categories. One is how much I'm convinced of the truth of this. Okay. And the second one is how emotionally resonant it is with me. Okay, cool. Um, and how much it made me feel the feelings oh, and awesome. dream the dreams. <laughs> okay. Uh, so for the first one, do believe You've shocked me because at the <laughs> beginning, it's been creeping up this entire podcast. I'm sure if I listen back, I can hear it in my voice because I started at like a four. Like, no, probably not. Yeah. But there's a couple interesting things and it's been creeping up and creeping up. And I really admire how well every time I've given you like, but what about this thing? You've been like, oh, here's an explanation that makes sense. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> um, especially with the AIDS stuff, really compelling for me. you so got to look at those New Mexico pictures. So you'll be I, like, wait a minute. Yeah. No, I want to. <laughs> I'll put them up there. You've got me at a 7.5 out of 10 cool. psychic gurus. Oh, yeah. Finding the chart. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very interesting stuff <laughs> and like very clearly explained reasons for a lot of it. And I had thought I had dismissed a lot of the like, oh, he talked about doing it as like, that's just Zamuda trying to sell a book. But there are more accounts I didn't hear about and there are more yeah. reasons for Zamuda to do it I didn't think about. Cool. Um, <laughs> in terms of emotionally want to believe it i would give it like a 15 out of 10 um (laughs) but i i think i'm going to give it an eight out of 10 okay shows yeah because (laughs) i think that there's a tiny slice of me left that is like i just want it i i want it it's so beautiful and sad that he just died so young. Yeah, yeah. With so much more to do and Kate, so much more comedy. To so see. much more emo than I knew. About. <laughs> I'm a very sad <laughs> person inside, <laughs> but I still eighty percent believe it because yeah. I want him back so bad. Yeah. And yeah. your version of it is that he's okay. He was so unhappy with his fame and he got away from it, which so few celebrities do successfully. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's interesting. Wait, so you want him to 
be have passed the 35 because that is beautiful and sad to you that like he's in a time capsule of like what he created in that time period yes that's why a slice oh, of me is left that feels that way as much as I'm like I want Andy Kaufman to be alive so we can do more comedy because I love him part of it is like he didn't pull a who's someone who did this I don't know he didn't he didn't do the thing that sometimes aging can be Seinfeld where he got angry and left out of the yeah. march of progress yeah he also didn't do an Elvis where Elvis just became a parody of himself yes he, he wasn't around long enough to do that can't you see it going that way if he yeah, had. if he came back. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like because he waited past the 30 years that were into like 32 or 33 years that he's just decided that he likes his new life better than mm. his previous. Yeah. He's like more comfortable with that. And I found that pretty convincing. <laughs> cool. Uh, cool. Oh, is there anything else? We talked about Super Slut. Is there anything else you want people to check out oh, if they goodness. like you and they like your vibe? Um, I try and tweet the jokes. I'm at, it's just my name, at Lindsay Stidham. S-T-I-D-H-A-M. You got it. Uh, I try and tweet those jokes. Uh, hopefully you can see more of my media sometime. Kate and Aaron are in a group called The Businessmen. There will be more of that stuff soon. We've got some hot vids coming in. We've got some you. hot vids coming soon for you. Um, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You were great. I hope you do many more podcasts. Thanks. It was fun. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>